Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. Okay, so we are here with my second part in my short series looking at Warhammer Quest Silver Tower. And today we're going to take a look at really what is the only two substantial uh, expansion packs that they released. So like I've said earlier, unfortunately, they didn't really expand upon Silver Tower at all with any kind of like significant uh, gameplay or narrative elements. All they really did to expand the game was release a pack of hero cards and a pack of adversary cards, which is kind of cool because both of these can actually also be used with Warhammer Quest Shadows Over Hammerhall, which I will take a look at at some point. So the base game of Warhammer Quest, Silver Tower, actually comes with six heroes. And I've la I laminated my original six heroes. And uh, what you get is you get the Knight Quester, which is kind of your tanky kind of fighter class. And uh, he's got a guard stance. He can challenge a couple different traits. And the way he... Uh, gains renown is uh, let's see if any of your save rolls score uh, six gain one renown so he's he you really want him up front tanking hits so he can level up and the back of these has some really nice art pictures of dioramas but i really like it and his mini i have painted this is one of the, i think this was the first age of sigmar mini i ever painted and i really fell in love with painting these guys because they are so easy to paint you would think that a mini with a lot of detail would be hard but i i think it's actually the opposite is true a mini without a lot of detail is much harder to paint because you are having to add the detail through your brush and the art if well if the uh if they have a lot of detail then they are easy to paint because the detail really does capture the paint on the brush quite easily so I, once I painted this guy, I knew I would love to paint more of this line of model. And it's a lot of fun. All right, so the second uh, hero we're going to take a look at. I, I, calling these guys heroes is a little, uh, could be a misnomer. They probably should have just been called warriors, like in the original Warhammer quest, because some of these heroes are actually like bad guys. So uh, you can be the Dark Oath Chieftain. So he's got a death blow and he can charge. He gains exper um, extra experience if he inflicts eight or more wounds in a turn. So he's kind of like your high damage output, your DPS type guy or one of them. And his mini here. I really like the way this guy turned out. Pretty cool looking mini. A little bit kind of a boring pose, I would say, but he looks kind of stoic. And then the second here, or the third hero of the game comes with this the Mist Weaver Psy. And she, an actual female uh, character in a Warhammer game. I know they've been, <laughs> they've been making those more and more lately, but I believe this probably this was the first female character in a Warhammer quest game up to this point. So nicely done. She's got a lot of different attacks. She has an area attack, which is nice. And it also stuns. And one of the ways that she gains extra experience is if the attack roll for an illusory assault is six, gain one renowned. So um, yeah, so she gains if she rolls a, like a critical hit. And let's see her mini here. I, I really liked painting hers. This was probably the most difficult uh, mini from the base game for me to paint as far as the heroes go. Just, yeah, getting all of this stuff painted up was pretty hard. And it was kind of like the first time I kind of experimented with uh, wet blending, I think they called it. It turned out okay. I'm not super happy with the way she turned out, but I do like the colors. And then we have the Tenebrel Shard, kind of like the uh, War Dancer, I guess you would say, kind of a crazy wild elf and he gains more experience by if he wounds three adversaries in your turn. So again, kind of another DPS type character. 
I like the pose on this guy. He was he was very difficult to paint as well. All these really thin chains. But he looks pretty cool. I like the way he's like just like leaping into the into the fray. And then you have the Excelsior War Priest, which is pretty much your um, you know, lifted straight out of the old Warhammer quest, the warrior priest. And he is a fighter and a healer, kind of like a cleric or a paladin or something. And he gains more renown if you uh, if you if you heal. If Sigmar's boon heals two wounds in a turn, he gains an extra XP. And this was actually the first uh, like black guy mini I ever painted, so that was fun. I like him. He turned out pretty cool. I like his uh, I like his cape a lot. Cool detail in the uh, the scarf too. And then finally, as far as the main heroes in the base game go, we have our our dwarf, our fire slayer, doom seeker, and he gains extra XP if he does uh, su if he suffers two or more wounds in a phase. So yeah, he's kind of like you know the troll slayer. He wants to be crazy and just get up in the face of all the monsters and re wreck as much havoc as he can. He's got all these little uh, tattoos, like rune marks, all over his body. And he actually does have a special mechanism where he gains uh, power as he uh, as he kills enemies. Love his mohawk, really cool. And then there's also a griff hound that the group of heroes can use. And I have not painted it yet, but that is its mini. And it's kind of just like a little NPC that can follow around, and you can do an extra attack with the uh, with the griff hound. And so with the hero cards, you get a very large number of additional warriors that you can use, ranging from, you've got, so I have these kind of in groups here. So you have your, um, your knights here, the knight is Xeros, the knight Vexilor, the Knight Heraldor, Knight Venator, and Lord Celestant. I have two of these. Oh, no, this is the Lord Cas Castellant. So those guys, the uh, Sigmarines, as people refer to them. I really like the minis for these uh, flying guys. I forgot what these guys are called, but I the main hero has one that has a bow, but I don't have a mini for that. So if I were to play with that hero, I would probably just use uh, one of these. I do want to paint one of these up. I absolutely love these minis. They are audacious to say the least, but I think one of the things that I like about Age of Sigmar is it does kind of speak to that perpetual 14 year old boy that lives inside of so many of us who just thinks this stuff is totally badass and that's kind of what you could call these sculpts they are i think you could say they are you know maybe a little juvenile but they are yeah they're just badass and that's that's the best word you can use to describe age of sigmar sculpts I mean, if, if I had something like this when I was back in junior high or or high school, I, I would have just thought it was like the greatest thing of all time. I'm, I'm kind of nervous to paint one of these guys, though. Seems like a lot could go wrong. Need to get over that and try it. And then we have here, we have our dwarves. So we have the Unforged, the Grimwrath Berserker, the Rune Lord, the Warden King, the Yarrick Rune Master, the Battlesmith, and the Cogsmith. Kind of like these steampunk dwarves. So I really don't, I actually don't know too much about Age of Sigmar lore. I'm not huge into reading the books of all like the, um, the different armies and, and cast of characters and stuff. Most of the information I know about Age of Sigmar is just from playing 
uh, Silver Tower and Hammer Hall, and doing some reading on a little bit of some of the other models I've gotten. And then we have, so we'll just go through the rest of these. We have a Sorceress, a Sinch, uh, Sorcerer Lord, the Great Bray Shaman, the White King, the Battle Mage. I would definitely use one of my old uh, Citadel Battle Mage minis for that dude. The Necromancer, who actually comes with a skeleton, a card of undead that you can use to uh, resurrect and fight for you. The Grey Seer. So as you can see, there there are you know there's all kinds of different factions that aren't necessarily good, like these Skaven guys here, who are considered heroes. But with the Silver Tower, you're going to get a whole bunch of different groups of people working together to defeat the Gaunt Summoner. The Saurus Old Blood, one of the old ones there. The Skink Star Priest, the Orc War Chanter, an Orc Shaman there. I guess that's I guess it's more of an Orc uh, Battle Mage or something because here's an Orc Shaman, the Orc Weird Knob Shaman. That's a really cool mini. I wouldn't mind finding that guy. Uh, the Grot Shaman, a Savage Orc War Boss, an Assassin. The Lore Master. So the Lore Master is actually also used in Hammer Hall. And I forgot to look at, I think both of these are the Black Arc Fleet Masters as well. I need to compare their cards from Hammer Hall to see if they are similar. I'm not sure if they are or not. The Nomad Prince, Exalted Deathbringer, the Lord of Plagues, the Blood Secretor, the Lord of Chaos. I have his mini somewhere. Really like that guy a lot. Exalted Deathbringer, Aspiring Deathbringer, the Slaughter Priest, the Blood Stoker, and the Skull Grinder. So I have painted a few more of those. Uh, these guys came in the Gore Chosen board game, which is a lot of fun, kind of an, a small little arena style combat game. And they were a lot of fun to paint. Took me a long time again. Like I said, I like painting, but I'm very, very slow at it. Each one of these guys probably took me like eight hours to do, which is just way too long for a mini. Really like this dynamic pose. Looks like there's a lot of momentum building up in that axe mace flail type thing or hammer. And then this pl Plague Lord here I like a lot. He's really cool. Very gross. Got to paint lots of nasty sores all over his body. And this guy I have all primed up to paint. So he's probably going to be next on the paint table. Really like his pose. That's super cool. But yeah, so that is the hero expansion. So lots of, lots of variety. So you could play Silver Tower quite a few times, mixing and matching with different heroes to have different experiences. And I think even though they're not... There's not a ton of variety in how you can build your characters. I do think that the characters are different enough to where you really can have a different experience. And then this is the Chaos Adversary card pack. So I think that this is a really good expansion. I wish more dungeon crawls of all different kinds released enemy expansions like this because that is one area where I think a lot of dungeon crawls kind of fall is their lack of enemy variety. And out of the box, Silver Tower doesn't have a ton of enemy variety. You get, um, let's see here. So out of the box for the enemies in Silver Tower, you have the Gaunt Summoner, you have its familiars, you have the um, Ogroid Thaumaturge, the Skaven Death Runner, which is only a two model. He's a one model. And then you have the Sangors, which is kind of like a minions. The Grot Scutlings, which are minions. Uh, the Carrick Alkalites, which are minions. And the pink, blue, and uh, fl uh, the, the pink and blue horrors there. So those are really the only min uh, enemies that come with models in the game. But in the back of the adventure book, you are presented with a few exotic adversaries. So these are kind of harder enemies that you can add to your games. You can have the Screamers of Zinch, the Flamers of Zinch, 
a herald of Zanch, and an exalted flamer. So not a ton of enemy variety, but this pack here really fixes that because you get just an absolute ton of different enemies. So there are enemy cards for all of the enemies that come with Silver Tower, plus enemy um, stats for the enemies that come with Shadows over Hammer Hall, but then a whole bunch of others. And I'm just going to go through these pretty quickly. The Carrick Alk. So these are the ones that actually come uh, with Silver Tower. The Horrors of Zinch, the Gaunt Summoner there. And you'll have, so if you use these as mighty adversaries, they can be kind of buffed up so you can have, a, you can create a more of a challenging scenario for yourself by using their mighty adversary um, alternative. And then you're going to get all your stats, little little piece of lore. You're going to get their weapons and how they attack and their different powers. And then on the back of each card, you're going to get their behavior table. And they're going to roll a D6 on their turn to determine what they're going to do. So then you have your familiars, the Ogroid, the Sangors, the Grot Scuttlings, which are pretty much just uh, night goblins from Warhammer. The Death Runner. And you have your Blood Warriors, your Herald. Really cool mini, that guy's fun. I want to paint him. Lord of Chaos. The Plague Bearers. Skull Reapers. Blood Reavers. Chaos Marauders. And there's your Screamers your flamers, skull grinders. So again, like some of the heroes are also represented in the enemy pack as well. Your gray seer, putrid, putrid blight kings. I love those models, really cool. And then some more skavens. You got your plague monks. You got your rat ogres, your blood letters, wrath mongers, exalted flamers, Chaos Sorcerer Lord, Aspiring Deathbringer. So these are all the models that like when I'm playing right now that I'm using because I have models for all of these or at least models that could be proxied for all of these. And then the rest of these, I, I do have a Skaven Warlord. So there's my Slaughter Priest. I'm not using him as, a, as an adversary because he's the hero I'm using. Uh, Skaven Packmaster, the Lord of Plagues, the Herald of Nurgle. I don't have any Nurgle enemies at all. Well, I do have some uh, Plague Bearers, I think. No, the Plague Bearers, what are they called? Ah, I can't remember right off the back of my mind. All right, so Storm Vermin. We have the Zangor Enlightened, Zangor Skyfires, regular old Chaos Warriors. I guess if I were to use them, I would use like my old Chaos Warriors from from uh, Hero Quest as those uh, models. Some Night Runners, uh, regular old Clan Rats, Giant Rats. I could always use the you could always use the Warhammer Quest uh, Giant Rats, and then Nurglings, which I don't have any. But yeah, so that's pretty much it as far as how they decided to expand Silver Tower. Like I said, not a lot. I do really like this enemy pack. I think this enemy pack is a fantastic expansion and I wish more dungeon crawls used something like that. Unfortunately now, both the hero pack and the chaos adversary cards are out of print and they can be very expensive. So if I'm enticing you at all with this video on Silver Tower, I do highly recommend you pick it up sooner rather than later. The game you can still find for relatively relatively cheap. If you get it without minis and you use proxies, I've seen it as cheap as $20 or $30. Um, and then I've seen it anywhere up to $200. Normally I see it for about, I think around $120 or so. But these packs of cards can sometimes on eBay go for almost $100 each, which is nuts but um i really do think that the price is just going to continue to go up as the game becomes you know longer and longer out of print 
But all right, well, that's the second part of my Warhammer Quest Silver Tower series. I am going to do one more part with some content. That'll probably come in a week or so because I'm waiting for one thing to arrive. And then I'm probably going to do a Let's Play series just going through the first quest at some point. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.